why would anyone do that? What were they thinking? One of the things that I've learned from millionaires and super successful people when it comes to their actions is they know exactly what they're doing. They think it out. They have a strategic plan behind it. So whenever I see something that I'm like, why would they be doing that? What are they thinking? I wanted to know. And Holiday Connections is an example. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Something that literally, if you implement, you can literally take your business to the next level. So stay tuned. What I found is that by applying what I'm going to teach you, these businesses were increasing their revenue by 30 to 150% return, in some cases over a million dollars a year. So if you want to learn how to make more money and have more impact, let's dive in. So hi, I'm Annette Bao, host of Millionaire Insider. For over 30 years, I've been advising and researching the top 1% and 2% of millionaires to learn what millionaires with amazing lives do differently. And now I'm showing you practical, easy to implement insight so that you can take your business, your life, and your money to the next level. So today we're diving into holiday connections like a millionaire. Yeah, it's a good topic. So please, before you dive in, click subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified of other episodes. So for today's show notes, you can go to millionaireseries.com forward slash 120.5. For all show notes, go to millionaireseries.com forward slash MI. All materials and intellectual property are copywritten by the millionaireseries.com. The information we provide is not intended to replace tax or any type of financial planning advice. All participants agree to hold millionaireseries.com and its affiliates harmless for results achieved or not achieved. So, why did they connect like this? The first thing I wanted to know was what were they thinking? I kept seeing a trend of this. I saw it with major firms, I saw it with certain individuals, and I wanted to know what they knew that I didn't know. And what I came to find out is that they want to make their investment matter and to get noticed. So yeah, they care, they wanted to connect with people, but they also had another motive. They didn't want to just be wasting their money. They also wanted to avoid controversy. They just didn't want to go down that path. Now, some people are okay with it, but I found that a lot of people did not want to deal with that. They wanted to be remembered. They wanted to have an impact. The results, as I mentioned, were staggering between 30 and 150% return on investment. So the first thing I found out was that they didn't just use their head, they also connected with their heart. Because let's face it, when people have a feeling about you, when they have an emotion about you, they remember you. Now, hopefully that emotion's good, hopefully it's positive, hopefully it's something that we want to be remembered by, but combining your head and your heart is a game changer. As Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they never forget how you made them feel. So we've got to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're really making them feel good. So what can we learn from major marketing companies? Now, when I started figuring this out, I was like, okay, what's going on here? And then I started doing other market research. And what I found as I started doing my research is that major companies get this. And I started thinking, okay, what are people doing over here? Ones that I'm connecting with, I know. What are these major companies doing? Okay, there's something here. And what I realized in my research, you know, Coke no longer sells Coke. They sell happiness. Disney doesn't sell rides. They sell fun. In fact, I'm always shocked when we go to Disneyland. And maybe it's just because I don't really like standing in lines. I don't really like being in large crowds. And I'm looking at this thinking, okay, it's costing $100 a day per kid. They have four kids and two adults at $600 a day. Plus the hotels are outrageous if you're anywhere near. And I'm thinking, these people are spending a ton of money. Why? Because their kids want to have fun. That, my friends, is powerful. BMW, they don't sell cars. They sell joy. And why do they do that? They understand that people make buying decisions based on emotion. So again, when we're making our holiday connections or really any connections, we've got to make sure that it's not just the gesture that we're having more of an impact. And that's what people who are really successful get. So I want to share a story with you. Mike, the missionary. So he wanted to increase his revenue, but he's over in Africa. So he's like, well, what am I going to do? And what he started realizing is by doing relationship marketing, not just holiday connections, but 
all types of relationship marketing, the impact it could have. And so what he started doing is he started giving the before you gave money to Johnny, where he lived, what he ate, how he spent his day, and then the after you gave money to Johnny. Now he has a bed to sleep on. He's not sleeping on the street. He has three meals a day. He's not eating out of the garbage can. Oh, and by the way, he's going to school and he wants to be a doctor to help other people. Now, do you see the impact? You're like, oh my gosh, my money is making such an impact. I will tell you, I donate to a variety of charities. And when I get something back of how I impacted someone's life, I mean, it's a game changer. You start thinking, I wonder how that person's doing. Am I really making an impact on these people's lives? I've been giving a lot of money with the pandemic for food because I'm like, I just can't even imagine being a mother or a single mother and worrying. I could just start getting teary eyed thinking about it, wondering how you're going to feed your kids. And I look at like my kids that eat like three times what I eat. And I think to have to come home and say, we don't have enough money to buy more food. I can't even fathom that. Like I cannot even go there. And so I give money because I don't know what else to do. Um, but the reality of it is, is that when I hear stories and we bought in one purchase 5,000 meals and I got this note back and it was saying how the people we impact their life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I mean, I feel like I'm doing something versus feeling like you're helpless. What do you do? Well, in Mike's case, he increased his revenue by 30% up $100,000 in one year. That, my friends, is huge. A 30% increase and he changed nothing else. That's what I'm talking about. People want to be brought into your story. You know, they want to they wanna be brought into a story. They want to have a connection and they want to have a happy ending because it makes them think like, oh, great, I'm contributing something good. Deep down, people want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that's where it can really have an impact. Not only can you affect people's lives, but you can really make a difference in this world. And I mean, what more can you ask for? So what I noticed was that a lot of people were sending out Thanksgiving cards and others were sending out Happy New Year cards. And I wasn't getting Hanukkah cards. I wasn't getting Christmas cards. And I was like, what is this? And when I started talking to people and really asking what they're doing, a lot of people just don't want to go through the happy holidays. Now, I was just kind of raised, oh, happy holidays. And because I know some people get offended if you say Merry Christmas. And now there's a big movement of saying, oh, well, if I want to say Merry Christmas, I will. And I think if you want to say it and you know who you're serving and they don't care, then do. I mean, I get a ton of Christmas cards. We celebrate Christmas. We're Christian. But again, I also get Hanukkah cards. I I'm fine with all of it. But I think the issue is what you have to do, understand enough is it doesn't matter like what you think or I think. It's like, how do your clients feel? If you have clients that feel strongly one way or the other, then you should do it. But what these people said is they said, you know, we just don't want to go there. So I'm like, okay. And we want to be noticed. So what they did is they'd either send a Thanksgiving card early. So you got it and you remembered it. Like think about how many Christmas cards you get. Like you get so many that, you know, it just, it just becomes like a blur. How many New Year's cards do you get? Not as many. So one or the other, you're either on the front run or you're on the after the rush. One of the things that's really powerful is a picture of your family. So now this is a dated picture because my little guy who's on the right is literally now 6'2". <laughs> he like towers over me. But people love family cards. They love can, feeling like they're connected with your family. It's so powerful. And especially if you're working with affluent women, they love them. And you can even do fun ones, but we almost always do a family holiday card. Or Happy New Year. All right, just a Happy New Year card. Those are options. All right, Happy Thanksgiving. I want to dive into this because this one can be really, really fun and so impactful. So what I realized was that my clients... A lot of them are single, they're women. They want, you know, they enjoy having something that they laugh about. So I travel a lot, or I guess I should say before I got some different houses, I used to travel a lot and we were down in 
Puerto Vallarta, which I love. And if any of you have been down there, you know that's one of the biggest huts in the entire world. And I took this picture and it was just so beautiful. And so I said, happy Thanksgiving. And then what I did is I sent it out and I said, as you prepare to enjoy Thanksgiving, we want to wish you and your family a happy holiday. Companies of Annette Bow. And then on the inside, I gave them this little quote, be thankful. Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be to look forward to? Be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During these times, we grow. Be thankful for your limitations, because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary, because it means you have made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for setbacks. Gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be thankful for your troubles and they become your blessings, author unknown. You know, when I started getting clear that the challenges I faced in my life were as amazing as the great times, everything changed. Because what I realized is if something's happening, there's a lesson. There is something I can learn in that. And I know that's a tough one for a lot of us, right? We're raised where, okay, as long as everything's great and how we want it to be, we're fine, but not if we don't. Not the truth, not the truth. Another one is Thanksgiving humor. So you can go to the Butterball Hotline and I'll give you the link here in a minute, but I mean, crazy stories. Like these are people that literally call the Butterball Hotline to ask questions. And you know, you think these are people out driving, they're out voting, they're out making decisions like scary. But they would call and say, hi, I got my turkey and my chihuahua jumped inside the cavity and I can't get her out. Like what do dogs do when they get nervous? Like, oh my God. Or another one's like, I just cleaned my turkey with bleach. Now what do I do? Like, okay, it's ruined. You can't clean a turkey with bleach. Or another woman's like, I buried my turkey outside that I bought and I can't find it. Like what's the butterball hotline gonna do? Another woman said, well, I was opening up the red cranberries in my white living room. Everything's white in there and they exploded. <laughs> like, turkey hotline gonna do? Another one was a truck driver who had to do a trip the day before Thanksgiving. And so he decided he was going to cook his bird on the engine of his truck. Now, you know, I've had a couple of people say, oh no, he could probably do that. I'm like, oh my gosh, what about the toxins? I, that's crazy. But he wanted to know if he drove faster and the engine got hotter, if it would cook faster. I'm thinking, Gosh, I mean, just let me know before I come to your house for Thanksgiving. But these are things that especially affluent women love, 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 love. So great, great, great ideas. All right, so let's look at some tips. The first thing is be creative and think outside the box. You can go to holidays.net and get some ideas for more than just holidays. I'm gonna do another training on relationship marketing, but I wanted to do one on holiday connections because now's a great time to really connect, not just with our family and friends, but also business connections. You can go and type in on Google, butterballhotline.com funny questions. And you'll just see ones that you're like, you have got to be kidding me. You can, you're not gonna even believe it. You also wanna conduct research. Find out what does your ideal client want? What do they need? What do they find funny? What do they enjoy? Now I know my clients enjoy wine, but you gotta be really careful, really careful. So this realtor had sent out a, a card to us with a gift certificate saying, hey, I sell million dollar homes, go have a glass of wine on me. I'm like, what a great concept. I might add that where he sent us, yeah, we got a free glass of wine, we ended up spending $150 on dinner. But I love the concept. What was interesting is one of my neighbors who happens to be LDS and they don't drink was very offended. So you gotta be really careful. You don't do that to a cold market. Like I would never send something that had to do with alcohol or anything, even dry humor. I'll send funny stories on Valentine's Day. My husband says it's male bashing, but they're just hysterical comments. But again, you gotta know, do the people you're connecting with, how do they feel about it? You wanna err on the cautious side. You don't ever wanna send anything to somebody that could offend them. If somebody doesn't drink or they're against drinking, you don't wanna go there, right? I know my clients love art. I know, I know they love to travel. I know they love my, you know, their family, my family, they love to see that. You gotta know that. 
and then plan your calendar a year in advance so that you're not at the last minute going, oh, what do I need to do? You've already got things planned so that you can get your Thanksgiving card out. You can get your holiday card out. And then you want to delegate and automate the process. And as I mentioned, you can go to millinerseries.com forward slash RCS to see the system we use to delegate ours. It's, it saves hundreds of hours of time. Okay, I want to tell you a real quick one. Now this one gets more into relationship marketing, which we will cover, but David is a millionaire business owner. And he started actively implementing and incorporating in his business relationship marketing. Not only holidays, but birthdays, everything. Within one year, he increased his revenue by 30% over a million dollars in revenue. That, my friends, is the power of it. And Holiday Connections is a great place to start. So there you have it. I hope you got some tips. Now, I wanna give you a couple other nuggets and takeaways. If you do not have a plan for your business, meaning like a, a thought out plan about how you're gonna generate the revenue you want in the upcoming year, I encourage you to access our three-step plan masterclass. You can go to millinerseries.com forward slash three-step plan. But let's face it, if you need more clients, more revenue, more results, this is the best place to start. The reality of it is, is you've got to create a plan, just like most advisors create plans for their clients. Most people, estate planning attorneys, create plans for their clients. You know, if you don't have a plan for your business or your life, you got problems. This is going to teach you how to create that plan so that you're not fumbling around and you know what to do. So for today's show notes, you can go to millinerseries.com forward slash 120.5. For all show notes, go to millinerseries.com forward slash MI. And please remember to subscribe and ring the bell. Then you get notified of bonus episodes. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me for Holiday Connections Like a Millionaire. You got to connect at the heart. You got to have a plan on how you're going to do it. You got to get noticed. Make sure that that investment matters. If you are here just because you want to learn more about millionaires, you don't really have a business, why don't you start thinking about ways in which you can generate revenue, ways in which you can increase your re residual and passive income. That, my friends, is how you become financially free. So again, thank you so much for attending. I'm Annette Baou. All international copyrights are reserved. Now, before you go anywhere, I want you to click the link above and watch the next training. These trainings are designed to help you take your business, your life, and your money to the next level. I'll look forward to seeing you on the next training. Bye now.